There we go. Did you get a notice that we're recording? Yes. Great. Yes. And uh, continue, I guess. Hit continue. Or... Yes. Oh, yeah. So I'm, um, I'm really happy to be uh, privileged to be talking to the principal trombone of the New York Philharmonic and principal tuba of the Chicago Symphony. What a treat. I mean, this has never happened to me before, so I'm excited about it. Um, I'm here on behalf of uh, Idle Wild Arts. We're doing our first uh, uh, online virtual music camp this summer, and both Joseph Alessi and Jean Picorni are uh, giving master classes for us, which is a, th a thrilling thing. Um, so I wanted to talk to both of you a, a little bit about uh, just teaching and life and music and all that. So. Uh, why don't we start with you, Joe? What are, what have you been doing this summer? Uh, teaching, a lot of teaching, and uh, working with my students, uh, editing s a CD with the students uh, that's coming out in in the fall. I'm very proud of them, all the Juilliard students. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, I'm seeing my students. Uh, well. Twice a month, uh, low brass class, so that's exciting. And um, I actually have a student coming here tomorrow, uh, but we're going to teach. I'm going to go outside and teach him. So in my backyard. Very good idea. And, yeah. Um, if they can call the cops if they want, but you know, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, but let's see what else. Just uh, recording projects. Uh, I just told you about the thing I did with a Japanese trombonist uh, he's very good and uh, we did a um, Prokofiev Romeo and Juliet duet with piano and uh, anyway just practicing a lot of music new music that I haven't been able to, to do and, and actually it's it's very nice to work on your playing because you don't have to you know, it's luxurious to just sit and and it's all about you know taking the time for yourself which is very nice it's it's true. I mean, I, I when I'm teaching, I always say to my young students, practice now because as soon as you have a family and a car and a mortgage, you're not going to have any time to practice. Sure. But, yeah, that's that's it is it is kind of a luxury for us. Um, Gene, what what have you been up to? I've been doing uh, some teaching, and uh, there have been some uh, virtual classes that have been going on. There's a the International Euphonium Tuba Festival, which I participated in um, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I got together with an appreciation class for uh, my own seminar, which did get canceled this summer because of the because of the pandemic. But it's uh, it's OK, because uh, we managed to get together with these uh, with these young people and um, been doing a lot of lessons on Zoom, and uh, and this has been good. Um, I've been kind of motivated by my colleagues in the Chicago Symphony who put together a lot of their own recording projects and that. And in fact, a few weeks ago, our new principal horn, David Cooper, uh, did a did an at home recital and um, explored uh, one of the. Uh, unaccompanied cello suites of Bach. And I'd, I've always wondered about those. And I've, I could never figure out how to get them beyond the garage. You know, uh, it's just, I can't, you know, like just where can you hear these things where it's not just gonna bore people to death. So I'm actually really close to coming up with uh, a, a very, I think a, a marketable version of it. Um, it's more of a fantasia than anything else. I wouldn't insult cellists by saying that it's an actual transcription of the piece because it, 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 it can't do a lot of what it, uh, what I would love to do. But uh, this has been very challenging to do uh, and work on. I've been, I've been putting in just two hours of almost just warm up time, just, just, for, just really getting down to nitty gritty, as Joe was saying. Just, uh, you know going through the beginning of the Arben's book, going through the beginning of some of these, uh, some of our uh, studies that we, back in ancient days, uh, the old faded out dates from 1968 in, uh, in some of my um, 
a book's just, oh yeah, well, that's what that's all about. Well, some of that stuff is really still pretty true. It's still a, it's a, you know, you go through some of that stuff and you realize, my gosh, this is a resume burner, you know, it just, it'll kill you to do some of this stuff if you're really doing it right. The, the other beauteous thing about, about this incredible time is that there's so much time to listen to music. Because, you know, that's the biggest thing that I have with my students say, well, you should listen to this, you should listen to that. Of course, do I listen to this stuff as much as I should? No, not really. And so this is a chance. I mean, you know, you look at a CD collection like this. Yeah. And you think, hey, look at this. Where, do, where the hell do I start? Oh, let me see Joe's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's something. I mean, you know, you you can you can really just kill a lot of time just listening to stuff that you really haven't uh, haven't oh, listened yeah. to in an awful long time. Okay, sorry. Well, um, it's true. I find that you know when you start listening, you know when you have when you listen at leisure and you're not listening for some reason, like oh, I need to listen to this because I got to play it next week or whatever. You learn so much because you know we we're basically about our ears, so we're filling our ears with all this amazing information that we don't often get a chance to do. It's wonderful. It's interesting that you talk about Bach because I just got off uh, talking to uh, Alan Vogel and Ben Kamens, both of whom answered my question by saying, "Yeah, I've been doing a lot of solo Bach, a lot of solo cello suites, a lot of solo." solo uh, uh, violin partias, that kind of thing. Um, and for myself, I'm also playing the cello suites. It's that we're all gravitating towards exactly the same thing. I'm about, I'm almost ready to, to, to perform the G major suite. So which, which number is that? One. Not to be an idiot, That's but is one. that number one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which, despite PDQ Bach having put uh, uh, American in Paris to go along with that, I can I can still enjoy it. <laughs> so, uh, but how's how's uh, how's Zoom working out for you guys? I'm I'm really interested to know, as a teaching tool. What, uh, Joe, what's what's it like? Well, it's actually great. I'm I'm very happy with it as long as you have the connection, you know, and and. Uh, I'm kind of an internet doctor with the, some of the students now because, uh, you know, I'll check, make sure their settings are right. A lot of them are not aware of that, uh, you know, the special settings you have to have on Zoom. And then uh, I've, I've, you know, I've uh, sent a student to an, a different room of the house, you know, where, where, where's your router? And says, well, I don't know. Well, ask, ask, you know, ask somebody in the house where the router is. Go down there and and let's have the lesson there. And then it's so you know you have to be in the right place and have the right connection. I've even I've even had some of my students upgrade their their uh, internet. And there's a, a great uh, website called Fast.com. You can measure your internet instantaneously. Uh, so and so somebody was somebody was getting you know 30 megabytes per second download speed and said, hey, I'm getting 300. Right. So let's let's talk when you get 300 or, or maybe 150 you know or something like that um so anyway the people have had to upgrade things to, to make it work um i'm going to a place uh, in a couple weeks where my internet is very bad actually uh in canada and um you know so i'm and i've asked everywhere how to upgrade it and there's just nothing available you know, up there, they just haven't. The infrastructure is not uh, that great up there in the Canada, eh? And uh, and so <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm. But the great thing about it is that it makes my students uh, rec record themselves. So I, I, the way that I do the, le the uh, lessons is, they have to send me a recording, a hard, you know, a hard recording first, so that I can hear it, and uh, in case something does go wrong. But even for the sound quality. So everybody has to submit these recordings, and uh, the students uh, are doing more recording than they probably ever did, you know, during the virus time, and that's good. And I am too, <laughs> actually. So I'm, I'm recording all these things, and you know, like Gene, and and uh, uh, it's you know, it's it's 
I, you're popping. You're, you know, I'm, my eyes are going, oh, my God, you know. And uh, so it, it reminds me of the old days when I would record all the time, you know. Um, and so I think I'm benefiting off of that. My students are benefiting off of it. And I'm trying to make it a positive thing uh, with them. Oh, that's that that that's good. I mean, I think all of us have come to this idea that we have to record first, and then and then play back, and then you discuss it, and and the the actual real time playing becomes, you know, kind of secondary in in that kind of a lesson. Um, have you what Gene? What's your what's been your experience with the? Uh... Well, actually, what uh, what Joe described is is actually the preferred way, which is having the student send in an MP3 or, or, a, or a video recording of some kind. I'm I'm afraid my as as I've discussed in our last meeting, my technology chops are kind of nowhere. I'm on the information dirt road. I you know smoke signals are good enough for me. Sounds, you know that sounds like a good a good lyrics for a song. <laughs> that's right yeah you lose your you lose your dog your truck and your and your download ability something like that <laughs> yeah um yeah so so they'll send they'll send that in and i'll and i'll kind of listen to it ahead of time and then we'll set up the zoom meeting and for instance, for instance, if I was giving you a lesson right now, I'd be fine. But then, uh, but then I just switch the, I just turn the, the computer over so you can see the main, the my main computer here, and we'll listen to something together that they just sent in, so they can kind of hear the same thing that I'm hearing. Um, so it's. Um, I, th I, I, it's not that debilitating. I mean, there's some things, you know, where you have to get, uh, where you, you got to take a, a closer look at what they're doing, what their chops are doing and stuff, but it's, um, it, it, I haven't gotten to the point where it's not effective. It, I think the zoom is, 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 is pretty good. And I suspect with all the technologies that are going on and changing overnight, now because of our situation um there's going to be better and better things uh there's a buddy of mine he's a tuba player out in hollywood he's more of a voiceover guy he's done the voice of uh in in, in movies and in videos and uh, did a bit part in everybody loves raymond many years ago and stuff but he's but he? he's <clears throat> it's bob joel Remember Bob? He was the one who barked at, at the Summit Brass meeting and and made Roger Bobo just come into the room and say, "Who who's okay?" That's getting a little wow. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah, he uh, he did a he did a Disney arrangement, a bunch of Disney tunes that we did at Summit Brass. Maybe maybe the summer you were there. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, but he was telling me about. Uh, 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 one a, a source called it's called Source Connect, which is what he uses in Voiceover, and apparently it's very very direct. It's a little expensive, but this is what the Voiceover guys are using now when they're recording voices and putting them on um, and putting together productions in Hollywood and 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 other places. So so the technology is changing uh, and it's getting better. I've been hearing new stuff all the time apparently the Colburn School of Music has a brand new system uh, which they're supplying their students and their professors with so uh, it's it's changing a lot of things are changing overnight practically but the zoom for me right now I mean you know what's the worst I mean the worst thing can be is it can sound like a tuba for God's sakes <laughs> you know <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you know, what I was getting you about <laughs> yeah I was getting very upset when I first started using it because I, I knew nothing about Zoom. And, and, and then, of course, it, you know, it, people play something and then it skips, you know, and I was, All right. I thought it was their rhythm. You know, I said, you're rushing there, you know, and, and then I realized after a while that, you know, that wasn't them rushing. It was, it was the Zoom. So I was, anyway, so now I'm used to that when it skips like that, you know, and I, I tried to just look past that. Sure. Ransom, yeah. do you have a problem with, uh, well, are, have students been sending in flute recordings to you, and are, are there problems with microphones and complicated sounds? And All, what I've been doing this summer is is uh, classes. I've, I've continued my Yale seminar 
every week uh, just to keep the kids, you know, focused on something. And um, some of them are in Europe, some of them are in Asia. And so with all the connection issues, there are occasionally things that come up. But um, I, w I wanted to tell you guys, Yale has just started sponsoring a, a side program that runs alongside Zoom that fixes all of the audio problems that Zoom has. So you don't get the syncing problems, you don't get the, the, the dropouts and speeding up. I just heard about that. What what is that called? Is that clean feed? Clean feed. Clean yeah. feed. And I just wrote a I just wrote out a, a, a some directions for how to use it. I'll send it to both of you. Uh, oh, you sent it to me. It. Somebody somebody trained me to to yeah. use it along. It it basically takes over the the uh, the uh, audio part of Zoom, and you you turn the Zoom Zoom audio off, and you you use this instead, and it's beautiful. It's, it's broadcast quality and it's free, which is amazing. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll send you guys the the link and the instructions on how to do it because it's not it's not it's not difficult, but somebody needs to sh explain it to you. But uh, yeah, it, it it definitely works and makes a big difference. You no, know, my son, my son went to Yale. You know, oh yeah. Years. Oh, in what? He was a, a theater and history major. Oh, cool. He stayed at the Dwight. Uh, uh, that's where he stayed. At. The Dwight School. Is it called Dwight? I believe. It's probably uh, one of the colleges, right? Colleges. Dwight. Yeah, Dwight College, right? Yeah, they live there and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful place to to teach. I have to tell you, it's you know you 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 go there and ev the buildings are beautiful and everybody around you's got a got a, a Nobel Prize. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> so. Um, well, um, we are uh, about to embark on you know this adventure of, of teaching high school kids. D can you guys tell me uh, a kind of a brief version of your teaching philosophy? Go ahead, Gene. Um, see, I'm just I've just got an indication my battery is running low. I'm going to just, if you don't mind. Just awesome. so we don't lose anything. Why, why don't you go ahead, Joe? I'm going to check some connections. Okay, here. sure, no problem. Well, I just, I just go to uh, two two items, I, and I, I I don't get past those two items. Uh, we don't go beyond that those two items unless uh, you know those happen first, and that's sound and and legato, and the legato is uh, is in in three parts. You know, one is uh, natural slurs, okay, so, so without, and then how to use the tongue, uh, when you use your tongue for legato, how to do that, and then how to operate the slide correctly uh, in legato. So the, those three things make up a good legato, and of course, air as well, but uh, so sound and legato, and, and that's, if, if, they, if they don't have that, I don't really, move, I'm kind of relentless, I, I said, hey, you got to get your sound and legato first, you know, for young for young players, and even even uh, you know whatever that the, there's a lot of teachers that just don't stress that, and then they they pile on more difficult solos on top of that, and then, and all it does it makes it worse, you know, it doesn't they, they don't get any better, um, you know, they might be able to do tricks on the instrument and play high or, or you know play faster but it, the quality is 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 not there and so uh, i just find that that's I'm, I'm like a broken record i just i could put a have a parrot or something a talking parrot and uh, you know and just I, I can just leave the room and, and just have this parrot you know uh do the job for me and and because uh, it's just it's just over and over i talk about the same things but my students, uh, you know, I are, are know that the ones that I work with at Julia, and they know they have to come up with that because uh, to get beyond, you know, those those two things, and then from there, you know, of course, rhythm and intonation and phrasing and and uh, where you go in the phrase and articulation and and range, and you know, it just goes on from there. It's but you got to start with those two things, so. That's my philosophy. So I don't really go. I'm kind of relentless. I'd be happy to to just do uh, one phrase, like four bars or even two bars, over and over again, 
and and teaching somebody uh, how to do it and rather than moving on so. i'm with you it's all about fundamentals yeah, because yeah. without those yeah as you say you can keep piling on detail after detail but it's never really going to be great because there's something wrong at the very in the foundation of the building right so yeah beautiful gene tell us yeah well this the sound of course is very important on the on the tuba and i want to make sure especially with young players that they're kind of all they're kind of acquainted with the same music if they're they're all starting with the same etude books and um, say this same solo something like that so they can all relate to a particular um, um, to, to a particular piece for example if they were all starting off if they all were acquainted with the whole suite in E flat just that opening line uh, we can get just a lot of very, very legato, very bel canto type of playing in. And <clears throat> I think I try to stress a little bit more uh, the idea of having a musical line and having a vector that kind of continues through. I have to be careful with, with uh, younger players uh, like high school students who might not be developed as far as the air capacity is concerned. You want to you want to have them play long phrases, but um, if they haven't developed their air capacities yet, and then they start to push a little too hard to get the to get the the line going on, they're going to start to tighten up a little bit, and then their throat's going to close, and then you start to run into you know uh, a whole bunch of other issues which are which are problematic. So, it, as long as they're getting a nice full sound and they're can they're giving the illusion that the phrase goes on even if they have to have to take a breath. And that's, you have to be a little bit careful about that, especially with, uh, with younger players who haven't developed that type of, uh, that, that much of a lung capacity. So, um, um, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing these, and, and these, and uh, just to kind of um, uh, double check on this, uh, will the, uh, will tuba players, they'll be able to play for Joe as well, yes? Uh, well, uh, sure. I mean, un unless for some reason your master classes are happening at exactly the same time, and I don't think they are. So, uh, yes, I think I think that would be excellent for them to get uh, some likewise, ideas. Likewise for the trombone guys. Yeah. Great, great. Well, look, uh, everybody, uh, there, there's it's, it's still possible to sign up for for the uh, summer session at Idlewild Arts, and. Uh, um, just go online, look up idlewildarts.com, and you'll find the information for the summer music program. And imagine being able to study with both Joe Alessi and Gene Picorni. It's a dream come true, even for me. And I don't even play one of their instruments. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys very much for your time, and uh, I'll see you next week online. Thank you. And I just want to say that a couple of my students, uh, I believe, came from Idlewild. So, uh, uh, so they're it's a great program and, and and thank you for having us and absolutely uh, great to see gene and yeah yeah i just i just wish we were going to be there in the flesh i i uh i've got i sent some stuff off to uh the tube net people today uh to make sure that uh people are quite aware of this program and uh and for me it's it's uh, I was in the high school program in 1968. Wow. Yeah, in fact, I hadn't even graduated to tuba. I was still anchor tonguing, anchor tonguing my way on clarinet, you know. It <laughs> took me 45 minutes to get through the Midsummer Night's Dream Scherzo, you know. <laughs> That's why I decided, well, maybe I, if I'm already that slow, I might as well go to tuba. But, uh, but I remember Idlewild School of Music and the Arts, which is uh, what it was called back in the day. Right. So, That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, long time ago. Thanks, guys, again for your time, and uh, see you next week.